a cool product by BioLag as well. It's called TM7. It's a humic acid that's extremely concentrated. It actually has 40% humic acid. And then it also has uh, micronutrients. For example, say you already have your medium already amended with plenty of micro macronutrients. However, when you get later in the flower, or say you have a more temperamental variety that wants to be more, I don't know, say deficient on micronutrients, this is an easy way that you can add micronutrients to your medium without having to skyrocket parts per million with any any other fertilizer to add your macro. So does the TM7 and the Cyto Plus, are they derived from any unique type of humic acid? Yeah, yeah, it actually is. That's the cool thing about this. Most humic acids, um, and this also brings us back to the full power as well, most humic or fulvic acids are actually derived from Leonardite. These are completely different because they're actually uh, derived from oyster shell. And then, once again, they're also digested enzymatically instead of using phosphoric or sulfuric acid. So it's an extremely clean humic acid, plus it's really extremely concentrated. And it's also being used as well for uh, propagating clones or seedlings. And the Cyto Plus is very similar to the TM7, except it's also using seaweed as well as the humic acid and the micronutrients. You might be asking yourself, what is a humic substance? Well, it generally de it derives from ex millions of year old ancient forest material, organic matter. Stuff that is super close to be fully decomposed, but not quite there. What is fulvic acid? Fulvic acid is a term that's not very well recognized by many registration processes. And the reason for that is because there's so many different molecules that can make up fulvic acids. It's, they use a very similar analogy like snowflakes. Snowflakes, yes, they're all very similar, but they're so drastically apart. Fulvic acid is the same way. You can have a very similar molecule, but one just one simple chain could be slightly different than the next, changing the way that it is, although it is still classified as fulvic acid. The reason what makes this one differently than any other humic or fulvic acid on the market is the fact that it comes from a microbial process. So what they do is they actually have, similar to the way that they ferment wine or beer, they actually are using microbes and bacteria enzymes to break down the humic substance, the organic matter, by a process of biodigestation they're actually breaking down the organic matter and turning it into an acid, a fulvic acid. And the, the difference between fulvic and humic acid is the, is the low molecular weight material. And so it usually rests on the very, on the very top and it's actually extracted from the very top of the, of the process. Or the humic acid on the bottom and it's generally a very dark black color. So that's, that's, why make, that's what makes fulvic acid so readily available and, such, and generally more expensive than the humic acid is because it, out of a very large extraction process, a very minute amount will actually be the high grade fulvic acid. There's a lot of competing products that are out there and what they actually use is, a, is actually a somewhat, of a, somewhat of a chemical chelation method. And what they do is they actually use phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid to actually break down those humates. And the problem with that is it actually adds to your PPMs, adds to your pH, will actually drive it down generally. When you're, at, when you're adding to your parts per million, there's not enough room for your TDS scale to add enough fulvic acid into your medium. That's what makes this product so unique, is it is PPM neutral and pH neutral. So you, you can use it at the full recommended dose at 30 mils per gallon, and they only, they only tell you to do that so that way you can, you're forcing that acid into the medium. And what acid's going to do is it's going to allow for those micronutrients to be uptaken into the plant. So the cool thing about fulvic acid, the way that it works with micronutrients, is the micronutrients somewhat piggyback themselves onto the acid and permeate itself through the cell wall. And the cool thing about the fulvic acid is it actually has a, has a really close relationship with the cells and that it can permeate through the cell wall and actually into the mitochondria. That's really unique because most of the time, the nutrients take a little bit of time to break down and they actually have to do more of a self-chelation process versus the acid helps chelate it right into the plant immediately. This is completely unique because it's done with the microbial process. If you were to say get a competitor product um, such as this diamond nectar and you were to add, even if you were to add the 30 mils like it says on this one, you're going to notice everything is going to go out of whack. 
You're potentially going to have extremely low pH in your medium. And the worst part about it is your parts per million is going to go through the roof. So that's going to eliminate any chance of adding other fertilizer on top of it. The problem with that is when you're wanting to use a full, a full vic acid, you want those nutrients immediately available to the plant. But if you're adding a product that's driving your parts per million through the roof, it doesn't leave much room for any food to get permeated back into the plant. So what you're saying is most more inexpensively derived fulvic or humic acids, which is pretty much most of the, the humic and fulvic acid right. market, Unfortunately, yes. is using a more inexpensive process, which dries up your PPM. So it can obviously, um, you know, be more of a favorable situation for nutrient lockout. But what they've done at full power is they've given us a, a enzymatically um, formed fulvic acid. So you have the ability of adding the full potential of fulvic acid without increasing your PPMs. That's what you're telling us? Right, exactly. That's exactly right. So if, the idea is just to get that acid into your medium. It needs to be readily available to the plant. Once the food has been added to the medium, it needs to be there. Instead of, yeah, it's great to add it with other fertilizers, but the idea is to add it earlier on so that way when you add fertilizer down the line, it's already present in the root zone. That makes me ask the question if they potentially, with a lot of other nutrient programs, lower the amount of folic acid that they recommend just because they know that it's increasing to their full nutrient programs total EC or PPM. That's that's very well said actually because that's that's just what's going on. You know, I've been told from a lot of old time growers, especially uh, that products such as this have been used at when they initially hit market, they were an extremely high application rate. Um, not necessarily this one, but a lot of other competing fulvic acids are telling, initially told you to use upward near 90, over 100 milliliters per gallon, which is great because you're getting that fulvic acid in the medium. But when you're using it at that high of an application rate with the phosphoric acid used to derive it, it your plant is going to immediately lock out. Um, your, your pH will be so far down, and that's the problem with that. You have to use a process that's being enzymatically digested. And you, you so you might, to, you might be able to get that full like, capability of the fulvic acid that you've never really seen before if you've been using other fulvic acids. Right, exactly. And the cool thing about this, I mean, it, this takes them months to produce. The other great thing about this fulvic acid right here is the fact that you don't necessarily need to cut down your feeding program. Most people that are using a, a chelating agent like this that's going to help the nutrient get into the plant is... They're going to want to cut down their amount of nutrients so that way they don't burn their plants. However, because this one does not have any parts per million added to it because of the phosphoric acid, you don't necessarily need to cut down your nutrients. You can, of course, because that food is going to be more readily available. But as long as this fulvic acid is in the plant, especially the fact that it's organic fulvic acid, it's not going to burn your plants nearly to the extent that any other competing fulvic acid will do. When you're using that as a foliar spray, you are going to want to kick down your nutrients. The reason is because it will immediately get through those leaf stomata into the plant versus when you're feeding it through the root zone, it's, it's still going to take a little bit of time before it burns the plants. Plus, as long as there's humic acid available into the root zone, the humic acts as a, as a conditioner in the soil, allowing for more food to be stored at a time instead of just building up and building up and then locking out essentially. For those that are using hydroponic systems, this is going to be a great solution for you because it ex is extremely thin running. The viscosity of the, new of the fluid is actually extremely thin. It's immediately available to the plants and it's not going to keep your pH from fluctuating. So the hydroponic growers that are using rock wool that are constantly checking and maintaining their pH, this is not going to be the product that's going to fluctuate it whatsoever. If anything, it's going to keep it more mainstream. I also wanted to make a quick point about the customers that are using uh, this product for compost teas. Now, like I said earlier, it's not going to change your pH or parts per million, and it is OMRI listed. So the cool thing about this product is it's going to make everything readily available. However, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add this to your compost tea right before you feed. So what I always encourage customers is either feed them on separate feed days or right when you're done with the brewing process before it initially hits your root zone or you spray it. Add your fulvic acid just before that process. To the compost tea? To the compost tea itself. And all it's going to do is just going to allow the bit of food that's in that tea to go right into the plant. And also you're going to allow that acid to get into the root zone where it needs to be.